Thank you. Please take your seats. Now, the next session is the part of this session, the second part of this session is, is West the best? Cancer guidelines. So, for this session, I request Dr. Gitanjali Agrawal Joshi, Medical Director, BMC, HRC and Surgical Oncologist, and Dr. Nidhi Patni, Director and HOD, Radiation Oncology, BMC, HRC, Jaipur. Please come on stage and proceed with this panel discussion for is West the best cancer guidelines? Next size, please. Can we have the next slide? Yeah. So uh, when we were planning the conclave, uh, we thought that this is a very important topic, very close to, I think, all the oncologists. Uh, that are we fighting cancer the right way? We have a land which is of huge geographical, demographic, and economic variation, huge population, high death rate because of late stage presentation, illiteracy, fear, and taboos hindering the prevention modality, as well as patients typically ending up treatment by paying from their own pockets. So, next slide, please. There are as Sir very well said, Dr. Jaisha, that lack of access to medical facilities, cultural habits are different, lack of knowledge and skills, lack of compulsory certification of death that he's called as notification, uh, the cover up of cancer diagnosis because of social stigma and lack of awareness. So that is why we thought of this topic, which is all close to us. For this, I would invite Dr. Nidhi Patni, ma'am. Next slide, please who's our director and senior consultant radiation oncologist who established the Department of Radiation Oncologist in 1997. She's a director of this comprehensive department who treats large number of patients. She pioneered brachy and high precision treatment in the state of Rajasthan. So I welcome ma'am and let's begin the panel discussion. Let me call upon my panelists uh, Dr. Ajay Bafna is already, sir, is on the dais. Dr. Naresh Letwani, Dr. Jayanti Thumsi, Dr. Anil Thakwani, Dr. Neera Gupta, Dr. Bhavna Sirohi, Dr. Sanjay Thulkar, Dr. Jay Mehta, Dr. Prashant Sharma, Dr. Samir Bakshi, and Dr. Jitendra Nangal. Can we all have you all on the dais, please? May we have the next slide, please? No, the previous slide, just before this. Previous. Previous. The slide before this. So thank you, Dr. Gitanjali, for the kind uh, introduction. And here we have all the esteemed panelists over here. So uh, what we are looking at is, uh, is West the best? It is the question which is uh, glaring in front of all of us today as we look upon our own scenario and as we continue treating our own set, up, set of patients, and especially uh, with each uh, growing uh, uh, facility, what we see is more and more number of patients now coming in for the treatment. They are becoming more aware, but unfortunately, the, they are still uh, in the same financial and economic uh, challenging group that they are facing, and it is not only the uh, the social fabric, which is a problem. But when we try to implicate the Western guidelines, ethnicity uh, also comes uh, into picture. The genomic profile of our own patients is very different from the West. Their built is different. Their nutritional status is different. Socioeconomic challenges are there. There is definitely lack of awareness and education amongst most of the patients that we see. And as Dr. Jayesh has also mentioned, there is still a big stigma attached to the word cancer. The patient still says, Saab report mein wahi aaya hai kya. They don't even want to mention the word cancer. 
Coming to the clinician's factor, this was the patient-related factors. When we discuss the clinician's factor, what we see is there is a lack of constant uh, continuous medical education amongst most of the people that we uh, see as our fraternity. There are no stringent guidelines for regular updates and regular uh, um, uh, examinations that we need to undergo. Similarly, uh, at many centers and in many sketchy notes, we see that the documentation is not up to the mark. And if the documentation is not good, we can very well imagine how uh, the things will take shape. How will we ever evolve our own guidelines? At most of the centers, there are lack of orientation towards academics and upgradation. And of course, the, with the increasing patient load and very skewed patient-doctor ratio that we see in oncology. Coming to the institutional factors, what we face is technical issues regarding infrastructure. Most of the centers, uh, whenever we conduct interviews for our medical physicists, we see that the patients uh, are devoid of brachytherapy. Imagine treating a cancer cervix patients without brachytherapy. It is ironical when in a country like ours, the highest number of cancer cervix patients we are seeing. Similarly, there is a problem of data collection, data retrieval in our country. If we do not have computerized data system, we cannot retrieve data. How can we ever evolve guidelines of our own? Moreover, the insurance and government schemes that have now come up, we were discussing with our own uh, colleagues right now before the start of the session, uh, there is a big challenge to treat the patients with these under these schemes where there is a uh, high disparity amongst the cash patients, what they can afford, or the insurance patients vis-a-vis -vis the government schemes. Similarly, there is unequal distribution of the oncology setups that we see. So having said this, I would first like to address uh, the question to Dr. Ajay Bapna. Why do we need to depend on the Western guidelines for adopting standard practices in managing our own patients, Dr. Bapna? Uh, thank you, Dr. Nidhi. Uh, by Western guideline, uh, mainly you mean is uh, uh, the Next NCCN slide. guidelines. Beside NCCN guideline, we have uh, in place the uh, ESCO guideline and the ISMO guidelines. So they, we have been using these guidelines for more than two decades, and these guidelines were were you were made using a uh, correct scientific methodology. And the, the level of evidence were evolved using the uh, well-controlled uh, randomized trial, phase two and phase three. And accordingly, the level of evidences uh, were drawn from this randomized trial. Uh, and they were used in the, uh, uh, this guideline. So basically, uh, the country-specific guideline, if any, ever will if we ever evolve, it will be just a trajectory of these big guidelines which are in place and have been used globally. So these are not only Western, but these are the global guidelines. And the, 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 the now the status of these guidelines are that they are being approved by all the regulatory bodies and by, you, by the uh, Mediclaim also. And the, 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 we speak the same language when we are going to the international forums because we are all are using the same guidelines. Regarding the uh, lim uh, challenges and limitation, uh, definitely there are uh, challenges and limitation because uh, if we use it for a country specific guideline, then there is a problem. I'll just give you the example of two uh, trials. First is the Taylor X where uh, the, the Oncotype DX test was you know, tried. And you will be surprised to know that it has been thrown upon us, but the Indian patients in this uh, Telerex trial were less than 1%. So th 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 those uh, data can, may not be or cannot be applicable to our population. For this, you know, there is a severe limitation and the challenge. And second trial, uh, I would like to mention, uh, when the jefitinib was used in the IPAS trial, it was clearly shown that the genotype and phenotype of the are country specific. Like in Asian population, when jefitinib was used in the selected population, it has changed the way we were treating the metastatic non-small cell carcinoma. 
so these are the uh, challenges and limitation and uh, these are some of the suggestion that why still we need to adhere to these uh, guidelines once we have our guideline in place probably uh, we will be using those guidelines till then i think we need to adhere to those guidelines uh, dr naresh ledwani uh, what is your uh, view on this uh, what are the challenges and limitations we face in our day to day clinical practice uh, is it easy to follow the guidelines or do we need to modify in our own setup uh Basically, as Dr. Wafner has said, that the Western guidelines are validated, validated more than 20 years of, uh, and uh, having various uh, uh, level three trials, which shows that these guidelines are validated. So these Western guidelines are validated, so we can easily adapt at them. But as you are asking me, where we should imply to in our concern, or where the, there are, what are the challenges for uh, implications of these guidelines to on our system. Let me clear one thing first. What is a guideline? Guideline is a type of a common language which can provide us the type of treatment or the management of cancer we do. We can exchange our communication by providing the common consensus or common la languages by these guidelines. So these are the guidelines. Commonly, as Dr. Bafna says, there are a few international guidelines which is prevalent. Most common is AGCC TNM guidelines, which is prevalent more than 20 years. Although it was established in uh, uh, 1942, 1953, between 1942 and 53, by uh, French physicians, but later then validated in 70, uh, later 70s and uh, come up in. Uh, every year, uh, you know, uh, developments come in this TNM classifications. But for uh, the Indian scenario, if you see uh, what are uh, the challenges, as uh, Dr. Jayesh Bhai already told you, there are very different type of challenges that we are facing in our country, as India is a vast geographical, demographical, and economical differences. Pa our patients are different. Our social economic status are different. Our uh, uh, social concern in view of uh, uh, the social stigma are, are different. Economical, uh, economical status is different. Our access to the healthcare is different. Our affordability to healthcare is different. So these are the different things which cannot be simply amplifying these Western data to us. Well, one important thing is that. Right, sir. Next slide, please. Dr. Jayanti, uh, we would like to know from you, uh, with a vast experience in breast oncology, of course, um, is the copy-paste uh, system of our practice uh, that we just copy Western guidelines, is it applicable in every scenario, every patient of ours, or is the scenario on ground zero different? So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gitanjali. <clears throat> I feel that especially talking about breast oncology, uh, the way we see uh, the, the tumor behavior in our country, in our ethnicity, is so different from what we see in the West. Um, in the West, it is known to peak at 60 years of age, but we see at least a decade younger in our patients. More than 48% of women in India are less than 50 years of age. They are in the premenopausal group. So right from the diagnosis to the treatment, we are so different from what it is in the West. But unfortunately, <clears throat> because of the various factors which Dr. Jayesh already mentioned very beautifully, uh, we have our own issues. And um, right now, we are following what the Western guidelines are. But they may not be totally applicable for us. Uh, for example, the Oncotype DX or the MAMA print, which is done in, in that the uh, representation from India is very less. Uh, fortunately, there is an Indian uh, make can assist breast which has come up now. So there are many such things which need, which need to come up from our own data. Um, also talking about breast screening, which is so important to detect the disease early, which is a game changer in my mind as far as breast oncology is concerned. Whereas in the West, mammogram is so frequently done, but mammogram may not be an ideal solution for our issues here. 
it may not be available for everybody, it may not be accessible, it may not be affordable. Uh, so, like uh, the Tata Memorial Hospital has come up that <clears throat> with the with the trial, which suggested that doing a clinical breast examination by a trained personnel once in two years has brought down the mortality. So we need to have our own solutions for sure because we deal with many many more things than what it is in the West, right from screening, right from the taboo, the fear, and the accessibility for the uh, treatment, and many more such issues. Thank you. That thank, you. thank you. So, uh, Dr. Anil, uh, our problem, our solution. What is your take on that? Do we have our own guidelines, like Indian uh, Cancer Network guidelines or NCG guidelines that we are having in place? What do you suggest? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Patni for uh, providing me the opportunity. So basically, what uh, I feel like, uh, as everybody has discussed uh, about the international guidelines like uh, NCCN guidelines, ESCO guidelines, or ESBO guidelines, and most of us are following that guidelines uh, only. We do have uh, our uh, um, like Indian guidelines, like ICMR and National Cancer Grid and all. But uh, very few of us are following that because they are less consolidated as compared to the Western guidelines. So we all, most of us follow uh, the uh, European guidelines or West Western guidelines. And, and uh, like all our TPAs and all, they also uh, accept that guidelines only. So unfortunately, we don't have any other option uh, instead of following the Western guideline. But yes, we do modify these guidelines, as said in the previous lectures uh, also, like uh, our Indian patients are totally different from the Western patients. If we see in context of the education, in context of the general condition of the patient, genetically they are different. So uh, if we compare like, uh, like radiation dose, like the chemotherapy dose, our patients, they tolerate uh, not as good as the Western patient. Most of, I, I don't, uh, I'm not telling you like all the patient, most of our patient, because they are 50% uh, of them are from the poor socioeconomic uh, strata. So uh, like, uh, according to me, like, uh, like in a CA breast, CA breast, nowadays BCS is a, a modern thing, but what I feel that most of the patients who are coming to us, they are uh, less educated, they don't have time, uh, like they are into job, so better to go for the uh, MRM so that uh, part of the patients who have T1, T2 tumor, they are uh, they are ex uh, like uh, not given uh, radiotherapy so that their time can be and money can be saved. As we know that in the West, most 99% of them, they are covered with the, uh, uh, the panels and all, but uh, contradictorily in India, only 40 to 50% uh, patients are covered with the panels. So uh, we do have to see all these things. So we have to modify and uh, we have done also, like we have institutional protocols also. Yeah. What we do that we modify the Western protocols and we make the institute like I was we, in. We do tailor them according to our own yes, patients. Yes, ma'am. 